G'day guys, my name is Ezekiel Ox and I am so stoked to be being interviewed again by the wonderful Chris Peters from Heavy Mag and we are here today to talk about Thrashville, the little boutique festival up in my neck of the woods now in the Hunter Valley. Beautiful, Zeke, thanks for joining us today mate. Thank you for having me. My pleasure mate, so we've got a fair bit to cover today but we'll start with Thrashville which will be held over September 8th and 9th in the absolute middle of nowhere mate at a place called Dashville, it's got Mammal, it's got Cog as a two main headlining act so what could go wrong mate middle of nowhere two bands like that yeah i mean if from singleton then it's middle of nowhere just down the road but then again singleton's kind of in the middle of nowhere so um <laughs> look i think that I, I think there's also some other great bands like um down girl are doing really well fantastic stuff um uh, bloody hell are a newcastle band that i've been super impressed with um interestingly enough for anyone that wants to find bloody hell they are not on social media Hey, so if you, want, if, you want, if you want to find them, then slide into my DMs and I can get you onto their text message list. They've gone super old school um, and they're, they're an amazing punk band and um, very heavy. So I, I just think the lineup's sensational. We can't wait to get back on the same bill. And we are on the same bill as our old touring buddies, Cog. Of course, I've narrated their documentary. I performed the River Song with them live. We've toured with them countless times on their headline tours and also just seeing them on festival after festival so um how good's it going to be mammal and cog in the same space it's um it's about time i would say yeah and you mentioned the other bands of course there is mammal and cog but you've got civic the shady the nasty down girl white heart crocodilius bloody hell like you say like but how, how good is it to see such an australian only lineup on the festival not wait, having to worry about the internationals yeah i think it's great um and I think that, you know, losing home bake, I, th I always was super disappointed with that. You know, Mammal was lucky enough to play on the 2008 home bake uh, with uh, uh, the Divinals, Parkway Drive, Fatted House, you know, because it was always New Zealand bands as well, which is good because we've got that Anzac spirit flowing. But, you know, I think that was a huge loss. And it, so to see festivals like Thrashville bringing back and, and it, it, you know, just it, it might be a boutique festival, but it's it's a chance for us to really flex our muscles and show what we're capable of down here because i mean we've got the best bands in the world of course we do um there's good bands from everywhere and yeah you don't have to spend so much and you don't have to go far from home to see uh the best in the biz i totally agree with you chris uh, mammal have got a well-deserved reputation as being one of the very best live bands out there but how good is it going to be playing to nature and friends with no noise restrictions or guidelines like you're going to be able to cut sick, man. 100%. Um, which, if for anyone who's seen Mammal before, um, if there's a level we can go to it, uh, you know, that's kind of, that's that's always going to be a matter of interest. But look, it's such a great opportunity. I, I, I'm lucky enough to have played Thrashville before uh, with another one of my projects. And it is such a good festival. It's just got the vibe. They've got tattooists there. They've got so much else going on. It's worth getting the tent out. It's worth coming to camp for the two days. Um, and it's it's a family-operated festival. So, yes, all of those things you said about it being a little bit almost off the grid, I think it's really cool. It's going to be pretty fun. Come come, get loose. I've already, I've already booked my time off, mate. I'm jumping in the car and I'm driving down for it. Are you seriously going to do the road trip? I'll be down there, brother. Well, how's that for an endorsement, heavy mag listeners? <laughs> the main <laughs> man. The main man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, um, hopefully, when you go to fuel the car up, two dollars a litre looks a little further away. <laughs> I was only listening to that song the other day. I had it on in the car. I pull into the <laughs> station, and that's playing. I'm like, "Fuck you, Zeke! You got it right." <laughs> I don't think it's a hard prediction to make with the way inflation works. You know, basic level of economic knowledge would economic knowledge would get you there. And I think it was more the fact that I was still alive to see that happen. That's what got me. <laughs> we sort of touched on this before, mate, but is it just coincidence that Mammal and Cog are on the same festival lineup again? Like, he's it, got a long history of sharing the same bill. 100% it is. I mean, the bands the bands are run by separate entities. I mean, we, you know, they've got their management, we've got ours. You know, we, they have their agents, we have, they have theirs. It really is just a credit to Thrashville for, for pursuing a lineup. And then I, I don't know how they've worked it out. You know, I, I don't know what anyone else is getting paid. I don't know how it's all working, but we're very happy. And so they've managed to figure it out. And so, um, 
yeah, we were. I was more than happy to say yes when the deal came through from our agent, um, because you know it's, it's going to be great. It's going to be great to see uh, Flynn, Luke, and Lush and Roger and and all the their crew, Yogi, all of that crew. Um, it's just going to be fantastic. We can't wait. But um, yeah, it is a coincidence to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> but shouldn't we? The question for your listeners. Question for your listeners. Should, don't you think it'd be good to see Cog and Mammal a national? together just uh, uh, a tour that's the very well like, like, already, unanimously the answer would be yes for that <laughs> <Dorothy Dixon>. <laughs> <laughs> what you know mate, like you got you both of you bands have uh, got strong social and political views so you avoid catching up for drinks after the shows just in case you he's opposed on something um no you might find that I'm not going to say who in the mammal camp, but mammal, mammal is mammal is 50% vaccinated, 50% unvaccinated. You can probably go check out our personal social media if you want to work that out. You would find that cog, like mammal, probably relating it back to the voice vote, like Aboriginal people. No one's a monolith. Everyone has their own politics. What what what, what you find in civil society is that people aren't fascists people aren't the kind of people that want to stick the boot into people there you, you can disagree on economic policy you can disagree on whether we vote yes or no to the voice i don't really don't care the point is is it coming from a point of care is it coming from a point of wanting to find the right thing because the fact is no one knows what's correct we all hold our own views some of some are formed from different reasons different positions i i think that there's there's a hell of a lot in common between what cog and mammal are talking about what you're probably seeing is more of a libertarian position coming from Cog's lyrics, if you analyse them, and probably more of a, um, a a sort of working class activist perspective, and, and more of a, a sort of I don't know, almost like a solidarity trade unionist perspective, which is we we get together and we fix it, and it's not going to be perfect. Um, I mean, who knows what's right or wrong. Um, but the main thing is the, the character of the person, and um, and I, I just I, I just I don't think that the guys from Cog and Mammal and the music that we're trying to create is trying to hurt anyone. I think we're trying to help, and um, that's the way forward. So I think you probably find that there'll be strong disagreements, but there's also probably a macro uh, overview of who the enemy is, which is billionaires, uh, the ruling class, the war machine. Um, you know, if you, I don't think that any members of Cog or Mammal would disagree that those people can just throw off. <laughs> and so, who knows? Maybe, hopefully, we can give people some songs to sing as they go about their business of smashing the billionaires and getting their fair share of tax out of them. You know? Good answer, brother. Now, I pulled out the calculator earlier and did the maths, and it's been six years since Mammal came back to life, mate. So I remember personally being excited for new material, and you guys exploded out of the blocks with Community and Dead before going quiet again for a couple of years. Like, was that always a planned timeline, or did sort of things just happen and get in the way? No, I mean, you know, Nick, Nick didn't just leave for no reason. We were going through a fair bit of internal struggle. <clears throat> Super proud of those three those three songs, you know, Dead, uh, it's like, uh, Community, Virtue Signaling, Dead. Um, but, but we had a fair bit of stuff we needed to figure out. And then, of course, the pandemic is, is just, uh, no matter what business you're in, whether you're laying bricks or playing music, <laughs> the pandemic caused all sorts of problems. So so we had to regroup and, and attack it again from a post COVID perspective. Then as things started to open up, it was just so, uh, what's the word? It was so um, like um, unpredictable for a period for everyone of what, what was going to happen and what states were doing. Because obviously national international travel is a huge part of what we were doing when we came back. We played a show with London before Nick left the band. And then we had to go through a process of finding Cade, realising we had something pretty solid. But then also not, you can't just put him in the band. You've got to think, very carefully about where, where does it sit and, and making sure that he's comfortable, making sure we're comfortable, making sure that we're getting, putting the structures in place so that we can hopefully move forward in a fruitful and thriving way. And um, there's a song on the new album called Maybe, which is about that process. It's about, you know, it's about how we chose to rebuild. Um, and there's also a song on the album called Agree to Disagree, which is about 
probably more what you were talking about with the cog mammal thing before. Um, so the album's kind of built off the back of the personal journey of the band with Cade becoming a new member. I mean, I, I haven't thought about Cade as uh, being a new member in so long. He's been so embedded, so involved, so on the phone, on the email, doing the work. He's just part of the furniture now. Um, but I think it was incredibly complex for us because we had internal arguments about COVID, vaccine, the lockdowns. Um, there was a lot of disagreement, a lot of agreement. And then we also had internal arguments about how we're going to structure the band. And then we had a lot of doubt about how the world was going to look. And then we also had a, a member change. So probably we faced even more challenges than some bands. But because those challenges were there, I reckon we've come out of it stronger than we would have if we just kept ploughing on without COVID. So as much as by the end of COVID, I'll have a law degree and Mammal will be in the strongest position it's ever been, I kind of look at COVID as maybe a, maybe a, well, look, the way we responded to it has meant that we've we've developed strength. And, and that doesn't, I'm not trying to push uh, to sort of badmouth anyone who struggled throughout it, but we have bounced back as a band extraordinarily hard and it's wonderful awesome. yeah awesome because yeah so like last year you came out with prime scene in the war but, and they're both absolute belt of the songs too man like are they indicative of what mm. new album's going to sound like yeah i think so we're going to try and build on those things so the decisions the band's making at the moment uh, we've got two days of revision left the album will be finished in those two days down at the um, alamo in st kilda with the amazing gloriously tall Tyson Fish, formerly of the Kyber Belt and Rook. Mem uh, listeners may remember those bands from the Melbourne underground scene. Um, and then we've also got our producer, Jimmy Marutis, there. The next question we need to ask ourselves after we finish putting everything on it is who mixes it? I mean, we've got offers from some serious heavy hitters to mix it, internationals, people that have mixed bands like Lamb of God, Straight From The Path, um, people that have mixed bands. Uh, we've been in communication with um, engineers that have worked on tool records. But then we've also got, you know, Forrester Savile, you know, who your listeners will understand is responsible for putting Carnival and Dead Letter Circus and a lot of the mammal stuff in your ear holes. So we, every, every Australian heavy music fan owes, or every international heavy music fan owes Forrester Savile a debt. So the question we're asking ourselves now is what do we want it to sound like and who's the best person for the job, who's the best fit? Um, there's also the option of going with Jimmy Marutis, who is our producer, but also mixed the Mammal EP and mixed the war and crime scene. So do you keep it in-house? You know, and look, you could say Jimmy Marutis is a smaller name, but only to the heavy music scene because Jimmy worked on the Avalanche's debut album. He works with You or My. He works with Living End. You know, these are legit artists, you know. And so I guess to, to round it up, is that Mammal is blessed um, to have to, to currently be surrounded by people who it's not about whether we can get the job done it's what do we want it to look like how do we want it to sound who wants to do artwork because we've created a reputation where people want to work with us because they know it's going to be red hot polka dot music and they know that it says something I think that you know because we people know that we're not easy to work with as well because we have high standards and we're not we're not in it just oh let's go we want we want to make statements with these records that's what we put out any more singles it's, we need an album fans want albums they want Door jam 10 they want rage against the machine evil empire they want tool album 10 thousand days or whatever they, they don't just want to listen to one song people like you and i chris and your listeners they want to sit there and absorb you know you want to machine head the blackening you know albums you can go back to and always find something new and that's what we're trying to develop with this record, not just snippets, but something that, you know, you know, people that care more can sink their teeth into. The question is, who is the right person to deliver that the way we want? Because we're co-producing it with Jimmy. So it's, it's it, look, I tell you, there's a lot of arguments to come. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look too and, 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 <laughs> no, but, Well, and we're actually, what we're doing is to, to make to make it count. We're actually planning on videotaping all of those arguments. So we're going to, We've got a film. We've got a cinema, a, a, a filmmaker coming down to shoot the last two days. <laughs> That's so awesome. That, so that at the very least, our fans will get to enjoy our meltdowns. You know, because <laughs> hey, how good is 
how good how good is it watching people you know argue and and, and fight in the studio you oh, know? That's great. and hug it out later you can make that into a best-selling movie later on <laughs> yeah we'll, make, yeah we'll see we'll see how we'll see how much we argue <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, one thing that, that I've always admired about you and your music brochure is like you've got an opinion and therefore a voice. So how does that being used to best affect lyrically what's going on on this album? Yeah, it's been interesting this album that we 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 sort of went with the freestyle mode. So I was in I was in the very open mode for two days for seven hours and I recorded 17 tracks freestyle in two days back last year. And then Pete's gone away. And all of us have had a crack, and he's edited those up into what, what the songs are. Then you've got this thing of, well, what do you want to change and what happens? But musically, it's very much channeling. Lyrically, this record has, it deals with, it does deal with the pandemic. It does deal not just with, we're not talking about, what it deals with is, how do we move forward from this? In a, in a, in a world where you've got polarisation, fascists on the streets, you know, uh, people really struggling with. I'm not saying this is any cohort of society. Everyone struggles to know whether the information they're getting out is legit. You know, like Trump weaponizes the concept of fake news, but the reason it works with that disgusting, racist, rapist, homophobe scumbag, which just has to be said about. And Biden's Biden's just a fucking war criminal as well. I'm not saying he's good, but Trump Trump can use the term of fake news. Because that kernel of truth sits with when he says it. I go, of course, the news is bullshit. Of course, Fox News. Is, of course, everything's bullshit. So part of part of the truth in the lie is to weaponize it. And so, it, it, it we live in a world where you know we're going to hell in a handbasket. Everything's either underwater or on fire. Wages are down. You can't buy a house. Your, your kids' schools are getting worse. You can't go and see a doctor on Medicare anymore. Like all these erosions to the actual conditions, well, extreme wealth is through the roof while wages are down. All these actual things that affect people. I, I, you know, I don't doubt for a second that Trump's supporters are pissed off because they're poor. He's not the answer, but th that's what we're trying to do with this record is to say, what is the solution and how can we come together? What can we come together on? And what we can come together on, the lyric on a song called Agree to Disagree goes white is black and black is white agree to disagree probably what this record's most grappling with is what can we agree on one song that you've heard as a pre pre-mix is keanu reeves which has the lyric trees are real and it sounds naive and it sounds stupid but the problem we have right now is we can't agree on what the truth is and what objective reality is and and that that that's that's makes it very difficult to to have one way of of having civil conversation so we can move forward on what we all want which what is is what your kids have got a full belly you've got a full belly you've got a roof over your head we're not we're not like billionaires we don't need fucking yachts and rockets and shit we just want some tunes a beer on sunday go out and see and my mum life my dad see all stuff like and, and that, that what Mammal's trying to say is we're all the same in some way. We have been divided for political purposes. In some senses, it's very intentional, but in other senses, it's just the chaos of living in a world where we can do this Zoom meeting, where everything's just the information age. And I think we're getting more prone to holding on to our wrong, incorrect, prejudiced views. And we all have them because we've got so much information coming in that we just cannot process it. We cannot possibly feel like we're making a decision. It's not just the age or the Herald Sun anymore. It's heavy music, Matt. You, you've got your own journalism. You know, <clears throat> it's every facet. He's got some sort of opinion coming at you. And of course, do they want people to be happy? Do they want people to find the truth? Do they want people to have a better world? No, they want clicks. They want, you want clicks. We want clicks with this article. You know, so I'd like people to look at this article. Yeah, you know, the difference is you're you're not trying to divide people. It's easy. Yeah, do you like heavy music? Come on over. But when it comes to dealing with ideologies that are so very different, um, you're going to struggle. But you know, the other thing is there's a line on the album which is really important for people to remember, which is fight every fucking fascist now. We will not tolerate people who want to 
subjugate, who want to ramp up nationalism, ramp up the war machine, get in bed with, with capital and find ways to put people in prisons, find ways to oppress people through the law, which is fascism. Yeah, subjugate women, throw disabled people on the hill, isolate the other. In Australia, it's the Muslim. Sometimes it's the Jew. And we're just not interested. What we're, what we're looking for is good health, better wages, better hospitals, all that stuff, better schools. And that's what the album's about. So we tried to find that kernel, that, that slim middle that we agree on. <laughs> It's fucking hard, man, because people are just wild at the moment. They're insane. And, and you know, hey, man, everyone's entitled to their fucking opinion. <laughs> then today. <laughs> I've heard of that point, too, mate. Like, one thing, another thing I respect the fuck out of you for is that you always back your stance with anyone who calls you out for it. And you've, you've always got well-researched and detailed facts to debate with. Like, have you always been that way, even as a kid? Like, did you like to... Uh, to talk about things, I guess, or did you that develop? Well, like, my parents, my my mother's my mother's always had a saying since I was a child, which is that some people say oh, I'm not political. My mum's always said everything is political. If you if you walk out the door, if you have a job and you earn a wage, well, that that boss is taking profit off that. That's politics. That's like that, that's just the way it's set up. Now you could agree with it and you could be fine with it, but you you, you can't sit outside of it. The way you talk to women is political. The way that women talk to men is political. The way that gay people have been treated, it's all politics. So I was raised in that household. I was marching with the unions when my teachers would strike. So realistically, I've just been really blessed to have parents that were open to developing their children as political actors. And then I've always had a very strong hatred and disgust for anyone who kicks someone who's vulnerable. Um, and and I, I, um, I just can't stand it. I just think it's it's cowardly, and it's um, and and when vulnerable people are getting kicked, then there need to be people who are less vulnerable, uh, like myself, who was brought up in you know with, with all those ideas, and also in a middle class household, who can step in and say, let's organise around this, let's stop this. So, um, I, I really think that your politics are formed in your interactions on the street, and I've been a protester for many years. I've seen what the police are capable of. You know, like, for instance, you know, anti-lockdown protests, doesn't matter what you think of it, do you think it's good that they're shooting rubber bullets at people in Melbourne? You know, yeah. it doesn't matter what your view is of what those protests are fighting for. What they're doing is wrong. What about what the police did? Yeah. Do you want that in Victoria? Do you want that to be a part of your political life? Because that is outrageous and it's disgusting and there's no need for it. And so you, you, you find the thing that is the core of humanity. And, and you know, they like to tell you it's complicated, but it's not. It's fucking simple. Tax the billionaires, stop funding the war, start funding the hospitals, start educating people, give children a chance to be critical thinkers, and fund the healthy. Uh, um, it's, it's really fucking sick shit. You know, like it, it, it could be easy, but they keep telling you it's complicated. So mammal, with the big dumb riffs, with the awesome hook, we, we try to make it a little simpler for people and say this is the way forward. Very good, mate. So, well, every, just all the stuff we've discussed, mate, you've, you've got a lot going on in the immediate future. But what, <laughs> what's next for Mammal? Like, you've got you've got Thrashville. What's planned after that? Then after Thrashville, will be we're talking all, all September, right? Yeah, September, yeah. Early September. Early September. September eight or nine or something anyway yeah. um look uh, we, we won't be releasing the album before then so the next focus will be just you know to be get this get this album out and there'll be film clips and there'll be all sorts of stuff coming so realistically it's about the record next uh, and then getting the what we need together for that um and then there'll be a national tour on the back of it and um we'll be doing our best to get overseas again um, and just continue to be a band. I mean, it's not really, it's not rocket science, man. We just want to play live and we want to put out shit hot tracks and something that, an album that people can listen to in five years and it stands up, which we've already done with the majority. And, and that, um, we'll see what happens. But we're, we're super happy with how many fans we've got. We want more. If you're a Mammal fan listening to this and you haven't shown your best mate our music, just go and do it. It's always word of mouth for Mammal. It always has been. Um, 
and and our goal will be to continue our mission, which we've been on since 2006, to make mammal. Well, I shouldn't say to make because it was to, to make us in 2006, but now it is to to continue to hold the mantle as the hardest rocking band in the universe. Right, a damn strain. Uh, no, no pressure at all, but are we going to have the album by Christmas? Yeah. Um, no comment. <laughs> Spoken like a lawyer. Wow. I just don't know. Uh, there's, there, I guess what I'll say is there's, there, there's too many factors in play. I, what I will say to the punters is I hope so. I want it out. Uh, and, and I just think that, but then in the punters, we make sure it's wrong, you know, because we, we just want to make sure the release is spot on. So there's a few factors at play. But having said that, there's a time frame on a it. So the goal will be to have a lot of people unwrapping new mammal vinyl under the Christmas tree on December 25th, 100%. Awesome. You know, I reckon that's probably the only time in history you've ever been captured saying no comment to anything. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the law degree. <laughs> <laughs> it's got me in trouble before. I've got, it's got me in trouble before. Shut oh, your mouth yeah. up. <laughs> No, my dad used to say, "My dad used to say, Zeke, we've got, we've got two of these. I'm pointing at my ears for anyone listening, and one of these I'm pointing at my mouth. Try to use them in direct proportion." <laughs> <laughs> it's one lesson. It's one one lesson that I don't think my late father ever managed to teach me properly. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, bro. It's been an absolute pleasure as usual. I'll see you at Thrashville on September eighth and ninth, then. Like it says, the new music that I've heard is absolutely sensational, bro. So best of luck and take care. Thanks, Chris. I, just, I can't wait to see you there, man. It's going to be so good to see you in the flesh and be able to have a cold one with you after the set. Hell yeah, mate. Good to catch up. Looking forward to it. Yeah. See you, brother. See you, my man.